February 11th is the anniversary of the death of singer Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston died in a room overlooking the pool at the Beverly Hilton Hotel. I'll get more into her death details in a minute, but I want to show you the nightclub in the heart of Hollywood that's the point of this video. This is the club where Whitney was seen in public for the very last time, just a few hours before her body was discovered. This nightclub that figures into the story is located at the corner of Selma and Argyle, just a few steps from the infamous Hollywood and Vine intersection. I wanted to know more about the history of the place, so I reached out to writer Chris Nichols and literally asked Chris. The building opened in 1949 as the Nicodell Restaurant. It's three stories, including the basement. In time, it changed hands, becoming restaurants, nightclubs, two newspapers, and even a church. In the 80s, it became a punk club where the Red Hot Chili Peppers played together for the first time. It became the China Club, where Sting and Elton John and Prince did shows. One of those surprise show places, you know, you know the type. And in 2012, for our purposes, it was known as True. A kind of fun fact, this uh, this bar, this nightclub, and the, these very doors were used in a couple of episodes in the seventh season of the TV show Dexter. It was uh, a stripper bar called The Foxhole. The night before the Grammy ceremony, music producer Clive Davis, the man who was responsible, they say, for discovering Whitney, for making her the pop superstar singer that she became, he was hosting a pre-Grammy party at the Beverly Hilton Hotel poolside, and Whitney was supposed to perform at that party. Now, the world had lived through several years of Whitney's very public breakdown, substance abuse, and disastrous relationship with Bobby Brown. It's widely thought that the Clive Davis party was going to be Whitney's triumphant return. It seemed like everything was on track, and she was certainly the sentimental favorite. People were really cheering her on. People wanted to see her come back, and people wanted to see her succeed. But that didn't work out. On Thursday, the 9th of February, Whitney was invited by her friend Kelly Price to a party at True Nightclub, which was going to double as a tribute to the legendary singer Etta James, who had passed away just a couple of weeks prior. Whitney arrived around 11 with her daughter, Bobby Christina. It was a party night, and Whitney was seen specifically drinking tequila and champagne. That's all she was seen consuming. Now, it's worth mentioning, while well, it's important because it's the point of this, uh, that Whitney had been dating the singer Ray J on and off for a while. Whitney got on stage and sang what would be the last public performance of her life. She sang Jesus Loves Me with Kelly Price on stage, and the crowd went nuts. A little bit later, Whitney was in the VIP section, and another singer by the name of Stacy Francis was there, as was Ray J., and apparently Stacy maybe flirted with Ray J or hugged him and Whitney misinterpreted it. Anyway, Whitney flipped. There was a blowout. There was screaming. There were hands and faces. It was getting physical when security intervened. And shortly afterwards, Whitney left the nightclub looking disheveled with scratches and blood. And she got into her car and she was never seen in public again. On her last day, Whitney was last seen between 2.45 and 3 p.m. Whitney complained to an assistant that she had a sore throat and she was going to take a bath and start getting ready for that night's performance at the Clive Davis party. The assistant left to pick up some items for later. At 3.36, the assistant returned to the hotel room, opened the door, went into the bathroom, and saw Whitney laying face down in the tub. The tub was filled with water and spilling onto the floor, but the water wasn't on. The assistant called the bodyguard. They got Whitney out of the tub and called 911. 911 emergency. 
Hi, how you doing? This is security from Beverly Hilton. Hi, what's going on? There? I need a paramedic. Apparently, I got a 46-year-old female uh -huh. found in the bathrooms. That's all I've got right now, but they're requesting paramedics. Oh, okay. Female so fell in the bathroom. What room is she in? I'm not sure if she fell or she was in the bathroom with the water. 464? Four, 434, four, four, I'm sorry. That's room 434? Four, yes. Okay, and it's not east, west, or anything else? It's room 434? Yeah. Okay. okay. You don't know if she is conscious of breathing at all? Uh, apparently she wasn't breathing and she's 46 year old. She was not breathing? Yes. Okay, but she is breathing now? I don't know. Okay. She was, the person that called me was irate and okay. didn't get much out of her. Okay, you have I've security. got security going there now. Okay, well, some police are far over there with a uh, person not breathing. Did, did it sound like the person was still not breathing? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, we'll get them there for not breathing. Is there any way you can get me to the room so I can try to get CPR? Yeah. yeah, we're going there now. Can you get me into the room so I can try to get CPR instructions? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, because she kept hanging up on us. Kept hanging up on you? Yeah. Okay, all right, we're good now. You're going to start with that, okay? Okay, thank right, you. Thank you, Billy. Paramedics and hotel security arrived and CPR was attempted. They weren't able to use a defibrillator because the carpet surrounding her was soaked with water, so they moved her from the bathroom to the living area where they continued to work on her unsuccessfully. Whitney was pronounced dead at 3.55 p.m. She was 48 years old. There was an extremely thorough investigation of the scene that took several hours. Detectives investigating Whitney's death found several prescription bottles and an also illegal drug paraphernalia scattered around the room. Submerged in the bathtub where Whitney was found was a towel that Whitney probably used to keep her hair dry while bathing, hair bands, and a small gravy boat that had contained olive oil. Whitney used it to condition her skin. While the investigation was going on, Clive Davis's party went on as planned in the hotel, but it became a very somber memorial event. Whitney's room overlooked the pool where guests of Clive's party gathered. One can only imagine how bizarre it must have been for the detectives to be in the room investigating Whitney's death with Whitney actually in the room and hearing the very party that was intended to celebrate her taking place just below her balcony. Approximately nine hours later, Whitney's body was removed from the hotel and taken to the L.A. County Coroner's Office, where an autopsy was performed. Her official cause of death, drowning due to the effects of arterial sclerotic heart disease and cocaine use. Natural causes, which means no one else had a direct hand in her death. Whitney's funeral was held on February 18th at the New Hope Baptist Church in Newark, New Jersey. 1,500 mourners attended. Reverend Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton were there, both friends of the Houston family. Clive Davis, Stevie Wonder, Alicia Keys, Jennifer Hudson, Mariah Carey, Kevin Costner, and Oprah Winfrey were just a few of the guests. Dionne Warwick was the officiant of the ceremony. Although it was listed on the memorial program that Aretha Franklin was going to sing a solo, she did not attend the funeral. Afterwards, Whitney was buried alongside her father in Fairview Cemetery in Westfield, New Jersey. Back in Los Angeles, the nightclub where Whitney sang on stage for the very last time is put on the market for just under $13 million. Almost immediately after her death, a tacky Hollywood tour company added the Beverly Hilton Hotel to its itinerary. In its artifact museum, which is now closed, was the tag from the telephone pole where Whitney was last photographed. Tacky. Thank you so much to the people who are supporting my page by the Patreon or the PayPal link below, especially Ian Young, Cindy Green, Tim Pratt, Paul Staples, and Henry Vinson, and Ann Santos. Thank you all so very much, and thank you for your continued support, Marilyn Albert and June Cole. I appreciate everyone's time and attention, and until next time.